We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands within the University of Newcastle's footprint areas, the Awabakal, Darkenjung, Biripai, Waramai, Wanarua and the Eora Nations. So today we're here to talk about the creation of the Researcher Skills Toolkit. The toolkit guides researchers from HDR students to established academics through their research journey, whether they're commencing a research degree program or embarking on a new research project. So the three presenters here today are part of a team of four research liaison librarians. We are part of the academic engagement team and our roles provide support to HDR students and researchers and staff of the university. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Nicole Gammy, who was a research liaison librarian during this project and she's since moved on to a new role. So the Research Liaison Librarian role is relatively new, it was created in 2019 after the library had a restructure. As we were adapting to the new roles, we started identifying areas that the library could provide more support or resources in. Um, during consults with HDR students, we noticed that a lot of students would see us um, because they were told to, they didn't really know why they had to see us and they didn't really know what support or services we provided. So we started to workshop the idea of a resource that the HDR students and, and researchers could use that would prepare them for their HDR journey or their research project journey and would possibly prepare them for their, um, their first initial consult with us. So the project group for the toolkit began in 20, early 2022 and consisted of many of our academic engagement uh, team members, including the research liaison librarians, our group lead, uh, Debbie Booth, the research and scholarly communications advisor, Lisa Ogle, the manager of the academic engagement team. We also had support from teaching and research support librarians, our managers, the copyright advisor and the digital library programs team. So we looked into what researchers and HDR students needed after reviewing results from a recent research and needs survey that asked what researchers asked researchers what their practices were and how the library could best su provide support to them. So we knew that there were some key areas like data management, research metrics and profiles that we needed to provide a lot more knowledge on. We had a student intern work on an environmental scan of any academic resources that provided uh, an open or an online course, a document or resources that um, outlined the researcher life cycle or gave some sort of orientation for HDR students and researchers. We then reviewed that list and ranked our favourites, noting what we liked about the content, the format and the accessibility. Uh, we also held a focus group with students to provide feedback on various online resources, also looking at things like format design and accessibility to help us design the toolkit. Their feedback uh, really helped us create some parameters around the toolkit, things like not making it a mandatory module uh, that they had to complete. We didn't want to um, overload them necessary with you know, other things to do. Uh, we wanted to make sure we put the resource on an open platform like our website rather than behind um, a login. Um, we didn't want to follow the same LibGuide format that we had uh, for other guides. We wanted to make this sort of a uh, distinct and unique resource. We also wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a library resource. We wanted to include advice from researchers themselves. So Nicole's going to talk about the researcher perspective videos that were integrated within the toolkit. Um, the toolkit was designed to follow the life cycle of a research project. And after looking at the, you know, the numerous life cycle models that are out there, uh, we settled on five modules to form the framework of the toolkit. Plan, find, manage, publish and share and research metrics. So to create the content, each research liaison librarian was given a module and they were then paired up with a teaching and research support librarian. So the research liaison librarian would draft the content and the teaching and research support librarian would review and provide any feedback regarding the content, typos, things like that. 
This was also a good uh, learning opportunity for the teaching and research support librarians. If they had any queries or didn't understand any of the content, we could kind of discuss it with them. So after the modules were drafted, we uh, were each then given another module that we had not originally drafted to then review and provide feedback. The LibGuide, the, the site template itself was created by our digital library programs team and each module was then populated with the material created and reviewed by the working group. Uh, all content was then checked by academic engagement managers and advisors for accessibility and wording of the contents and how each module flowed, finishing with a final review undertaken for consistency by the group lead before we went live in late 2022. Over to you, Nicole. Thank you, Jess. So within the so within the toolkit, we've incorporated researchers' perspective videos. These are videos where we have interviewed our researchers and asked them to provide their perspective on various aspects of the research journey. We felt that it was important for the toolkit to be a collaboration. So these for these perspective videos contain advice from research, those in research roles to help guide others. As part of the, the university student internship program, we employed a student for 150 hours in semester one of 2022. Our successful intern, Justice, was in the last year of her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. So she developed a wealth of knowledge around Adobe products, including video editing, which was very um, beneficial to us as this process went on. So Justice was actually responsible for filming and editing the videos of the researchers. A research liaison librarian attended the interviews with Justice to ask the interview questions and the recording was done um, by the intern. So in conducting the questions, we developed a wide variety of questions based on each area of the research journey. And then when we went to visit the researchers, we were able to pick and choose which one best suited their subject area or their research knowledge. In total, we interviewed 14 researchers with representation from all of our university colleges with a mix of disciplines and genders. After the interviews were conducted, Justice was able to use their experience with video editing software to break down and cut sections of the original videos and break it up into topics, allowing us to embed those videos into each area of the toolkit. So you'll see that, that um, we have 18 researcher perspective videos that have been created. Each video will include between one to five researchers talking about their perspectives on a topic. And it is embedded within the topic area of the toolkit, but also available on the library's YouTube channel. In addition to researcher perspective videos, we have three additional videos that are created featuring library staff members, and they discuss data management, copyright, and NOVA, our institutional repository. I'm going to hand over to Jenny now, who's going to give you a, a demonstration of the toolkit and also show you one of these videos. Thanks, Jess and Nicole. I'll just uh, share my screen. So, Jess and Nicole have given you a great idea of um, how we got from here to there or there to here. Uh, so let, let's have a look at the toolkit now. So you're seeing the toolkit, aren't you? Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. <laughs> so the toolkit is linked from the library homepage. Um, and in essence, it's a LibGuide. But we wanted to create something that didn't look like a traditional LibGuide. Um, and the end, end product looks a bit more like a, a web page rather than the traditional LibGuides that we're all used to. The layout of the panels on the Research Skills Toolkit uh, reflects that idea of, of following a, a journey that researchers may take. So we've got our plan, find, 
manage data, publish and share, research metrics, and you'll see we've got also a help map, um, help and site map here. And the images that we've used throughout the Researcher Skills Toolkit feature uh, University of Newcastle staff, students and locations. So if I go into one of these, within the guide, we've incorporated a, a few things to make the navigation easy, such as the left-hand navigation panel within each of the modules, but there's also links across the top that will take you back to each of the, the tiles or those modules that we saw in the beginning. It's just to make sure that everybody has different ways of being able to access um, the different modules or if they wanted to, they can go back home. And the other thing that can be done is that each of the modules can be shared or embedded in other resources, um, such as Canvas courses through the URL at the top of the page, or if you go into each of the separate sections, there's a URL as well, as we all know from a, a LibGuide. If we go back to this find information, so, the other thing that we found is that some of these modules can be used regardless of where the researcher is in their um, researcher career. So this find information module is actually very useful to anybody who's studying regardless of, of their level um, of research, whether they're an undergrad or postgrad. If we go to the research metrics, we embed um, a link to this page uh, when we're creating metrics reports for researchers uh, and academics, because this will help explain some of the terminology or how you might create some research metrics, what are alternative metrics, those kinds of things. If we go to publish and share, there's information in here um, it's an, an overview of any of the aspects of publishing, sharing and promoting research that might be of interest to, to any of the, the researchers. Um, and it's all here in one place. And again, we can uh, send a link just to this page if we wanted to. So if we go back, uh, we're on publish and share. So Nicole was talking about the videos that we've embedded in each of these um, modules. And they were to add an element of first-hand practical experience from a range of the well-known academic researchers at the University of Newcastle. Our intern, Justice, edited all the filming that was done and integrated all of the interviews into cohesive professional looking videos um, that include subtitles and music. We wanted the videos to not only be instructive to other researchers, but to also be interesting and engaging. So I'll play this and hopefully the magic of Zoom will give us the sound. This is a, this is a really a question for a HDR student. So I, I really would see that um, taking advice from their supervisor is the most important thing. And, and I would hope that their supervisor is guiding them to the journal that's most appropriate for that research. Coming in as a, as a HDR um, researcher who hasn't published before, it's such a mystery, all of these things. So having someone to mentor and guide you, and that might be your supervisor, and if your supervisor isn't very experienced that way, then I would encourage you to connect up with someone who is uh, experienced. It's, it becomes, it's so much easier to publish in high quality journals once you've already through, published so in high quality journals. More. I would say if you're publishing your first paper, um, you, you want to kind of, you don't want to rush that first paper out too fast. Um, it's important to publish, um, but I also think it's important to publish work that you're proud of and that you're willing to stand behind because the, that paper is going to be out there for years. Um, I so that's just to give you an idea of how nice these videos look and how um, cohesive they've become because Justice was able to um, pull everything together with her knowledge that she was um, learning from her degree. If we go back to this find information tab as well. So as you can imagine, there'd be a lot of information that we needed to present in each of these um, uh, sections. We all know how much, uh, how many words are needed sometimes to explain something. So what we've done to try and create um, a fairly compact view 
is we've incorporated tables, but we've also used um, accordions as well. And within these accordions, we can present a whole lot of information in a really tight space. So in this one, we've gone through those complex, um, uh, you know, different search techniques and we've tried to, to pull that information together in a really tight sort of space. And this all makes um, accessing the information easy as well. And again, going back to what um, Nicole or Jess were saying, this is also accessible on a whole lot of different platforms. If we go back here, so the help and site map links us back to each of the modules so that if people can't remember what they're looking for, they can quickly go to the site map and navigate through. There's also an index so that uh, if somebody's looking for a particular term or particular area, they can jump into the index as well. So I'm just going to stop sharing. So the next part of all of this is um, making sure that we evaluate um, everything. Um, it's an ongoing evaluation and continued, continuous maintenance that needs to happen with a, a resource like this. Um, we have to keep updating links to any new, you know, our new library search, for example, will mean that we have to create resources um, and digital learning objects. When we launched the um, the Researcher Skills Toolkit, we took it out to the, the different schools and colleges and internal stakeholders to find out what their feedback was. Um, and we are always interested to hear any feedback that comes back so that we can, can um, continually uh, upgrade whatever is needing to be done. Uh, we're also continuing to create digital learning objects. Uh, which are also being embedded um, in the toolkit. Uh, 